Greetings, welcome to Therapist Take, and we are back with another episode. We're going to talk about um, another aspect, that, another thing that happens in betrayal trauma treatment, which is uh, what we call the, the changing of the rules. So you definitely don't want to miss this, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Therapist Take, and this uh, it will ultimately be episode three of our podcast when it eventually drops. Uh, but uh, and you can also go back and watch uh, the other episodes on Facebook and YouTube. And we do record these live, so if you ever want to participate live in the episodes, so if you're listening to this on the podcast or watching one of the rebroadcasts, uh, you can. Tune in live. We usually try to do them on Fridays around 1230. <laughs> we always say around because we usually have some kind of technical difficulty yes. or something. It's like 1230-ish. Yeah. And we also have like, you know, Mary and Josie did it last week with their mm-hmm. show, which is Are You In Session, which they 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 talk about more about what kind of what goes on in the mind of the therapist and the, ther- the therapist process of. So I think last time they were talking about setting goals in therapy but they also kind of welcome people into the mind of the therapist on like what what's why that is important for them and what goes on for them and things like yeah. that. So it's a really neat concept and they're really good friends and so it's fun watching them mm-hmm. uh on on their show. So So but we are back with another deep thing. I think it's deep anyways, yeah, which is sure. um talking about this idea of changing the rules. So I have a question for you, though. Oh, okay, of course. Um, are you a rule follower or not a rule follower? <laughs> are you asking for you or are you asking? Okay. Let's just act like I don't know you oh, that Oh, okay. Well. Um, yeah, I'm a rule follower. Mm-hmm. Okay. But to be fair, if the rules don't make sense, then that is not the case. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I I think I like... To toe the line of the rules. Okay, middle child. Right. Like, uh, in fact, I have some friends of mine call me a line stepper. Um, you know, just uh, if I cross a line, I don't want it to be too far. <laughs> to yeah, not too bad. <laughs> just enough to, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, we, oddly enough, when I play board games, like, I am a rule follower. I am a as my wife says, a stickler for mm, the rules okay. to the point where she, there are some board games she will not play mm. with me. Cause I'm like, hey, babe, that's not, that's not the rule. Well, you sound fun. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. If you follow it's the fun rules, if the rules are fun. <laughs> the rules say, I know. Um, uh. And uh, she's kind of like, it's funny because she is, She's probably more of a rule follower than I am, but when it comes to board games, she's like, oh, I'll just make up my own rules, mm-hmm. you know, type mm-hmm. thing. So yeah. I don't know what it is about board games. But I don't know. They bring out parts of us. What right? do you do? Do you follow the rules in board games? Yes. Or What's the point of playing them if there's well, no rules? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but right. I also don't like board games that aren't fun. So I won't even engage in that. Right. Like well, Monopoly. Yeah. Why would you want to spend hours doing that? Oh, that sounds awful. Monopoly's Oh, oh, it's so much fun. No. But no. I feel that way about I'd like Risk and some of the other strategy games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, Monopoly is my one long game. Uh, I'm done. Uh, I'm done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so no we're thanks. talking about changing the rules. Yes. Right. right. And, mm-hmm. um, but I think you know, despite how, how much you consider yourself a rule follower or not, our, our brains do like. Yes rules right they do yeah and and our brains will naturally resist change so when you we talk about like i'm not if you're thinking to yourself i'm not somebody who likes change i'm like nobody is nobody nobody likes it most people don't yeah yeah well i mean like it's not natural for us to like welcome change like i think we really have to be intentional with something that's really like like what i would consider a real change you know, I think some like subtle changes, subtle differences, and I think we can welcome that. But it's like a real change creates some kind of level of risk, and mm-hmm. it makes us nervous and anxious, and right, and throws us off our game, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Well done. Thank you. Uh-huh. 
So I brought it back for the I board game. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um but nobody knows the rule changes or the what I call the collapse of the rule system better than betrayed partners, you know. Mm-hmm. So people have been betrayed through infidelity or sex addiction, things like that. Mm-hmm. And and um because it's just so abrupt, you know, right. it's more of a obliteration of the rule system right. than a collapse of the rule system. Right. But but before we go down that, let's talk about the the idea of a rule system in couple relationships. Okay. Because I don't think most people think about relationships as having rules. Right. No, I don't think so either. And I think that sounds very boring. And I don't think people would sit down and say, let's think about couple rules, right? right. But let's even let's even talk about why part of the reason we're talking about this today was because um you know, we're in the holiday season, it's about to be Thanksgiving, and so this is a time when the rules of family systems are often very apparent, right? right? We always go to this person's place, we always eat these foods, we always watch football, we, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And so those are, you know, some rules that, traditions, right? Mm-hmm. You could call them traditions, you can call them rules, because if you've ever been in a family that has traditions and you don't go with those traditions... Right. Then you get a strong response because you're breaking mm-hmm. the rules. You're breaking the rules. That's right. Exactly. Right. So that got us kind of thinking about mm-hmm. rules and relationships. Right. Because, you know, typically around this time when we're doing, whether it's, you know, on YouTube or writing a blog or something, you know, uh, I'm, I'm really kind of big on like, you know, it's Thanksgiving, but not everybody's thankful. Right. And, and when we were talking about doing this episode, or like, what if it's things can be different, good, you know, yeah. like good, different, you know. Um, but I think that it's, you know, that takes some time, you know, like you can have new traditions, mm-hmm. you can create new, a new way of doing things, whether it's how you do holidays mm-hmm. or just how you do Monday, mm-hmm. you know, like it can be different and it can be good, but you're the our brains naturally push back. Right. It, it's uncomfortable with it because it's not territory we're familiar with. Right. So there's a, a sense of unsafety there. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I think it kind of, th- I think what you're speaking to just, you know, reminds us how much our brains like, like certainty and familiarity, even right. if it's not good or pleasant. Like right. Lots of times we do things like, I don't know why I do this. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like I think we we gravitate toward that. Sure. Right. Sure. And um and so, uh so as I was kind of saying earlier with the, you know, cu- I don't think couples often think of their relationships having a governing set of rules, mm-hmm. you know, but they do, and they're and I think most of them are implicit. I agree. Some of them are explicit. Sure. Can you remember any? From like your relationship, where you're like, we're, you know, when, you know, one thing we're going to do is, da 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 da, you know. Mm. No, I'm trying to even think back to like our premarital training when we would do rules and roles with people. Yeah. Even examples of explicit rules. Like one that I can think of with me and my wife was like we we talked a lot about like, hey, are are do you have any interest in joining the military? You know, and we're like, and I'm like, no, not really. Do you? No. It's like, okay, then we're, we, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> we can move forward. Like we didn't really yeah. want to be. It, it had nothing to do with being anti-military or anything. It's just we didn't want to be in a relationship where there was that potential to just be uprooted and travel, travel. and things. So that became kind of an explicit rule. Like we're we're not going to be that family. Mm-hmm. We're not going to. That's not going to be part of the rule system for us. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's just, the, that's the only one I can think of just off the cuff because I mean, most some of them clients are implicit. I, I mean, this isn't mean, but some clients have like, you're going to, you know, earn the money. Yeah. That's right? a good or one. Or you're yeah. the one who manages the, you know, the money. Sure. And, um, like traditional values. Sure. And, sure. Versus yeah, more yeah, shared it, or. And, mm-hmm. and values is another way to think of rules. Absolutely. Like you can use a lot of different language, but I mm-hmm. think the reason we're choosing rules today too, is to give us kind of how we started the idea of, sh- do you follow? Should you follow? How do we make them? Because I also mm-hmm. think that what we're talking about when we move now more into implicit rules is that a lot of times these implicit rules are not working anymore. Right. I think we, they're out, we outgrow them. Right. 
even if it's not like you mentioned mm-hmm. betrayal trauma or some trauma or addiction, exactly. sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, like milk it, it just expires. And yeah. I think a lot of times if you're going to be in a relationship for a long time, a committed mm-hmm. relationship for a long time, it can freak you out when the rules are changing. Yeah. Right. And I think it's very important to normalize. Well, they have to change because you're not in year one or year five or year 10. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's, but I think that the awareness that to, Oh, it's just time to update the rules. It's up, time to update our policies and procedures right. as a relationship. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think it's, yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think every couple <laughs> goes through this. If you, you know, if you've got some, um, you know, distance in your marriage, you know, or your committed relationship that you're in, you're going to experience, um, you know, the relationship kind of, uh, you know, evolving. Right. And right. the way I always describe it, it's like a child that grows and develops. And, and if you try to keep your 18 year old 13, you're mm-hmm. going to have problems. Sure. Right. Yeah. And, um, and then the, the child cries out, you know, yes. in, in childlike ways usually, and the marriage cries out. Mm-hmm. And I think that's usually, I think that's one of the, the functioning pieces of, uh, or one of the functional reasons we have arguments. Sure. You know, it's the relationship doing its part in um, communicating right. the desire for change. Yeah. You know, and uh, so, but I also think too, when we launch into our adult life, it's, we're, we're launched with kind of a, a our parents playbook or, mm. you know, grandparents or whoever it is that whatever domain you were under, sure. you know, in their rule system. And it's like they, they handed us a, a playbook and with a bunch of blank spaces and we just kind of played Mad Libs with it for mm-hmm. a while. And then we start to realize what does that, that their way doesn't necessarily work for us. Sure. Sure. Um, and, and we have to create a new playbook, but, when couples get to a point, and I think most of us go through this, like you said, whether it's uh, we're betrayed or not, whether we it's infidelity is definitely one of those things that will throw people into this very quickly. Right, right. But it doesn't have to be that. I think most couples will hit a point where enough of life happens mm-hmm. that they're really rethinking the entire rule system of their life. Sure. And it's cut can be kind of overwhelming. I've yeah. often described it as somebody handed you, you know, where your parents handed you a book that you're just playing Mad Libs with. Now you're being handed a book that's just a bunch of blank pages. Mm-hmm. There's not even a table of contents, and it's like, where where do I start? Mm-hmm. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, uh, and no, and again, nobody knows that better than betrayed partners because it's such an abrupt collapse, right. and they're having to rethink all the rules and put them under the microscope and decide mm-hmm. what uh, what am I going to do with it? Is this one, is this a rule that's going to work? Right. So, I mean, that's one of the questions I actually pose too is how do you, I mean, what's your thoughts on like how um, a, a couple would decide like, um, does this rule make the cut or mm-hmm. does it not make the cut or do I change this one and mm-hmm. what do I change it to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, there's not a fast answer to that. Right. But I think, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think it, it starts a lot with some individual searching and self-awareness, mm-hmm. right. Of how is this rule working? Um, well, let me check in with myself. Is it working for me? Right. right. If you, let's take that explicit rule we started with. If, If one of the members of the relationship was in charge of finances and, you know, after betrayal, you find out that not knowing finances was, you know, feels like part of the deception, Mm -hmm. then you have to do some self-awareness of, all right, then am I ready to check back in? Does that rule work? Does that, I Mm -hmm. need to be a part of this. Right. Um, And so I think it starts with some self-awareness, maybe Mm -hmm. even some exploring your own individual identity, right? Like, who do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be and then what kind of partner do I want to be and then what kind of relationship do I want to have yeah the the, what you're talking about too is really quite challenging too like in terms of like if you're listening to this like trying to conceptualize what does that look like Mm -hmm. um and because there sometimes like because you're this is kind of the journey of Mm self-discovery that journey of self-awareness and 
And sometimes it's just like, I don't, you know, I, I'm changing the rule for no other reason than I want to. Yeah. So it's like, uh, so why don't you, why, why aren't you paying attention to finances like you used to? I'm used to trying to go with your example. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the, the answer is like, I just don't want to, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> you know, and, yep. it's, and it's to me looking uh, like kind of looking in on that as a therapist, to me, that's really an effort to establish or, you know, the where do you end and I begin phenomenon. You know, sometimes I just have to say no, just to hear myself say it. True. Sure you know, to establish my individuality, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, and that lets me know I'm me and you're you and we're not, you know, our, we're not fused. Right. Yeah. We're not attached to the hip, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a ball and chain. Yeah. Yuck. Right. I hate Mm -hmm. that concept. That that imagery. Yeah. Me too. You know, I just want to know who's, Who's Who signs b- up for that? Well, who's the ball and chain? Who's the prisoner? <laughs> I, know. I guess, I guess yeah. like anything, both of them by far so. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't know which one I'd rather be. I don't so. either. And then I'm an know. object that <laughs> holds people back. <laughs> or the person held back. Or the guy being held back. Yeah. You know. So, mm-hmm. so um, I kind of feel like the ball and chain has a better deal. <laughs> I really do. Maybe. Because at least they don't know. What's That's, going true. On? That's true. That's <laughs> true. Awareness, like we're just talking about. Right. <laughs> uh, we can pick apart metaphors. I know. But uh, so <clears throat> another thing that I think viewers that were just on the edges of their uh-huh. seats tuned in, yeah. but we are uh, just to kind of, um, kind of just real quickly, just kind of revamp what we're talking about on this episode. We're talking about. Uh, the governing rules in couple relationships and how those for most people will get um, challenged and uh, and kind of have to be revamped like the, what I call a collapse of the rule system but it's especially true in uh, couples who have experienced betrayal trauma whether it's sex addiction or infidelity chronic infidelity um, but what we were where we were when we uh, when the video kind of cut out on us <coughs> is um, we were talking about how people will, uh, can identify their rules, their rules because we were talking about how they are often implicit, you know? And so the way that I do that in, in I'll do that right in session with couples is when I hear them say words like supposed to, or should have, mm-hmm. and you mentioned always oh. and never, mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. words are reflecting rules. Right. And they're, and they're often implicit. Yeah. And so I'll stop them right in the middle of it and say, like, let's, why, why should you? Right. Why must you? Yeah. Why should Who you? Who said that? Right. Yeah, is it in the Bible? How or come? Something? You know, I mean. Right. Where does that come from? It, right. Right. Exactly. Right. You know, and, and they often, you know, the, most of us, and this, you and me included, when we have a governing set of rules, we don't. Take, we don't step back every mm-hmm. time and ask right. ourselves why. We just right. do it. That's right. the point of the rule. It's That's just right. And usually if you actually do trace lineage of that stuff, you'll be like, well, because when we got together, you took the trash out first, and you, so you're the trash mm-hmm. taker out, right? Right. Well, you do a better job cleaning the cooktop, mm-hmm. so you clean the cooktop. Yeah. You know, a lot of times it's a very, yeah. like, just because it's what we've always done. It's the right. tradition, right? Exactly. Like, um, why are, uh, why do men have to take their hats off indoors, which is not so much a thing anymore. Oh yeah. I was going to say, huh? You know, I remember, I remember asking my mom about that, you know, Mm -hmm. like in church, I was like, why, why do the men have to take their hats off, but women wear their hats? And her answer was, well, because their hats are part of their, their outfits. You know, and I don't know if that's really mm-hmm. how it started, but that's how she made sense of it. But we we know there's some level of respect that started, in, you know, mm-hmm. somewhere down the road. Somewhere. And people get really upset about that, sure. especially like national anthem, yeah. things like that. I, right. was, I was holding my daughter once um, uh, in um, a ball game with a national anthem hit. And I'm holding her in one arm and I got like something else in the I probably like 
nachos or something <laughs> in the other hand and the national anthem starts and i'm just like i'm just being still and just holding her but i still have my hat on and um and some a lady walks up to me very politely and says do you care if i remove your hat and i'm like sure please you know because it there's a we have a neural pathway that mm. that says this means something mm -hmm. and um and it bothers bothers us and so so one thing I talked to him about, I said, I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't do right. it. I'm just wanting you to take a step back mm -hmm. when you feel, when you catch yourself using those words or feeling mm -hmm. those words and just take a step back to ask yourself, why should we, Right. you know, why should I, is this right. going to be a rule that's going to be in my new play relationship, book? my new right. book? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, or is it going to, am I, is it going to be completely nixed? Mm -hmm. Or is there just going to be some version of it, you know, some kind of modification? And it's, I think, I think it's kind of daunting a little it bit is daunting, because sure. there's a lot of rules. Well, and I think when you're looking at it through the lens of trauma, rather than just looking at it as a developmental experience, it, there's pain associated with it. Right. So, sure. you know, you use the, if you have an 18 year old that you have 13 year old rules, you're probably going to have some behavior problems and conflict. Right. And that's an indicator developmentally you need to change your rules, right? Mm -hmm. That's not so that that may be a parenting mishap or whatever, but when you have a betrayal trauma or another trauma or addiction and you didn't just, you know, slowly grow and develop into the need for a change, like you use the word obliterated. So the rules right. must change. And for partners, they didn't ask for them to change. Right. Right. So the injustice of the rules changing means we can't right. just sit down and say, should we change the way we do finances? Should we change the way we do sex? Should we change the mm -hmm. amount of time we spend with your family? It's not coming at it from a curious or neutral position. It's coming at it from pain. Right. Right. And so that makes changing the rules. Right. Mm -hmm. um, not just, a, hey, let's knock this, this, this new plan out and, you know, in mm -hmm. this one afternoon. Right. And I think that like with, um, like uh, people who are doing betrayal trauma recovery. So there's been infidelity of some sort, some a discovery, and there's that obliteration, as we just said. Uh, there, uh, what they they will eventually enter into into when they, we start helping them tackle this whole rule change, and um, you know, a a lot of times I don't think they understand or would would anybody expect them to but that a lot of people go through that process without the injury of betrayal mm -hmm, right right because Absolutely. as we said earlier you know like it's just you know uh, infidelity or sex addiction or, or that discovery of some some kind of deception like that mm -hmm. will definitely uh, launch people into that space real quickly yeah. and so then part of what couples who are doing betrayal trauma recovery have to do is they have to deal with a, a infidelity injury in addition yes. to this whole process right. of changing the rules that that is actually something uh, most couples I think go through at some point. In yeah. Time. Yeah. You'll have to, but, yeah. but a lot of people go through it with, without having to do with the betrayal trauma stuff. Right, right. I think my wife and I went through that. I did not have to, I, I can relate to that part of it with clients. I can't, I don't know. I can't relate to the infidelity injury part of mm -hmm. it. And that definitely makes it more complicated. Sure. Um, exacerbates the injury Absolutely. or the pain of it, I guess. Yeah. Is the way to say and that. I think too, you know, if today what we're talking about, can it be a good change? I definitely want to say this before we go there. We're not trying to just be Pollyanna and say, oh, something terrible happened and, you know, we can find reasons and it can all be better. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to make sure that we're clear about that. Yeah. But I also do think that we're asking people to think, um, how do we do this differently and can it be good? Yeah. Right? Because I do think that one of the core concepts around resiliency, mm -hmm. you know, is the idea that when things happen, you can be flexible enough to find mm -hmm. the opportunity in it. Right. Yeah, and um, well, uh, so yeah, I'm glad you said that about um, uh, especially people who are in the middle of it. When probably the the last thing you want to hear somebody say is, "Don't worry, it'll get better." Yeah, you know, yeah. like when you're like 
in the middle of that yeah. injury. I like, shut yeah. up. Sure. You know, that's awful. Right. And so, um, and there, there also is no guarantee the relationships work out right. because the challenge of changing the rules is, mm-hmm. is kind of your, uh, the two individuals are kind of assessing for themselves what, you know, what kind of rules do I want to operate under? And then can we get our two rule systems to dance, right. you know, and, right. and find a, find a beat we can dance to. And, yeah. Yeah. And that's challenging and it's, yeah. and it doesn't always end with them getting to be together, you know. But let's, uh, when we talk about this daunting task of doing that, and we, we started out by talking about, like, the rules that come with holidays. Like, mm-hmm. we all have these rules or these traditions that we follow. Um, let's talk about how we might help somebody approach the firsts. Mm-hmm. You know, the first, uh, ho- the first Thanksgiving under a rule system that hasn't been fully fleshed out yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, the first Christmas or the first, um, birthday, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, require, a. it's probably gonna feel, um, really strange in the sense that you're like, Oh, do we, you know, you have to ask a lot of questions. Are we doing this? Do I still, Mm -hmm. do we go to the same place at the same time with the same people? Do we make the same food? Do we, you know, when it comes to gift giving things, do we still buy? Mm-hmm. You have to ask a lot of those questions and what felt automatic. Oh, I always do this. We always mm-hmm. do that. All of a sudden is left with questions and that can be uncomfortable, right? It's er, confusing and new, but I also think it's a great opportunity to say, right? Like mm-hmm. we were talking about Thanksgiving food. Why do you have to make that? If nobody eats <coughs> it, why do we make it? <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Could it be okay to replace something nobody eats yeah. with something that they do? Yeah. Right. I mean, how many times have, we we just eaten something because we were expected to. Maybe I don't want to anymore. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't right. want to eat that. Right. Maybe I don't want to go there. Or maybe I don't want to go there at sure. that time. Or maybe I don't want to stay that long. Or uh, yeah, that's a maybe big I don't want to talk to that person the whole time. Or mm-hmm. y- maybe I don't want to do it at all right now. Maybe right. yeah, I don't want to do mm-hmm. it at all right now. Maybe I'm staying in my PJs. <laughs> right. and Which we know we have a mutual friend that's doing that right now. You right. bet. And like, so yeah. I think that's that's mm-hmm. what this is about is exploring. And I think... You can find when you start doing this, you feel empowered, right? Right. Yeah. But there's, I think that, that empowerment, especially in the beginning, comes with a, a hint of sadness loss. because yeah. of, right, because of loss. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. It's butting right up against it. And, it, and it's it, it's kind of like, you know, uh, when you lose a loved one, mm-hmm. like that first year is hard. It is. The second year is hard. Probably not as hard as the first year. Right. And the, it gets less difficult as you figure out the new rule system right. that it, that is uh, that you're operating in that doesn't involve that person anymore, right? right? right. And um, and I think the same thing is a very similar experience um, uh, when it comes to the loss of the relationship. It's just right. what we would call an ambiguous loss, right? right? right. Which is Pauline Boss's work, right? Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. The loss that. It, it, it's a loss, but you're still here, mm-hmm. so it does. You know how does that work? It's not, yeah, you it know? doesn't have the same rules around it. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So one thing that I think is really important for people to do is is to plan um, is to have a plan for mm-hmm. a particular part of you that that usually lets you know uh, very quickly that this part will exist without your permission Mm -hmm. and that is your emotional self yeah so when people going through this like they just start feeling things they've never felt before Mm -hmm. they can't they feel like they can't control them they just happen and they get nervous about these particular settings because they know there's a set of rules that they're not confident they're going to be able Mm -hmm. to to follow anymore right <clears throat> and so, and I'm happy, of course, during the holidays, as we approach the holidays, I'm sure yeah. you're doing the same thing with your clients. There's a lot of these conversations going on. Yes. You know, what's your plan? What's yeah. your plan for Thanksgiving? Right. You know, how are you going to honor this part yes. that has made itself clear mm-hmm. that it will exist and operate with, yeah. with or without your permission? It's like a toddler. It's coming. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to honor it? Yes. You know, right. and with respect. Right. Yeah. Which means 
I'm, I, as you said, yeah, I might not be able to stay as long. Mm-hmm. I might need an out. Mm-hmm. You know, um, might need to plan a, a, a pre-planned excuse to right. just leave for a little bit, you just bet. to go driving around the car and breathe. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. or sometimes it's like I just can't go this year. I right. just it's I can't nice go and honor this feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we help clients give language to that, right? What do I mm-hmm. say? What do I do? And the plan and the, <clears throat> you know, again, you name these things so that they can be tamed and you can, mm-hmm. you know, connect to that with less shame and, and judgment and criticism of, well, oh my gosh, what if my mouth runs away with itself? Okay, right. What if it does? Right. So yeah, it's all, it's, it's part of this letting go of old rules and finding mm-hmm. the ones that fit for now. Right? right. So I know that part is, like you said, can feel s- scary mm-hmm. or unpredictable. Mm-hmm. But boy, it's a sure important, p- important mm-hmm. part of this function to change the rules. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, another one I like to mention too is um, all feelings are welcome. Yep. You bet. You know, so again, here I go with it. <laughs> Don't. The rule is you're supposed to be thankful on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. You might, you might be, and you might not be. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you, you might know, un- be some unthankful of might show up, right? And there right. needs to be room for that. That's right. Uh, a common example I give a lot though is because uh, another first is what about what does family vacation mm-hmm. look like? You bet. You know, and one of the rules are, that I think is pretty common in our culture is that you're supposed to. You're supposed to. You hear me saying yeah, it? Yeah, I heard it. You're supposed to go on your vacation. And enjoy yourself mm-hmm. and have fun. And that and enjoyment equals laughing, happiness, you know, playing, playfulness, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Probably mm-hmm. not in that picture. You don't envision a lot of hurt or crying or, right. you know, sadness. And if there is, that means you ruined vacation. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. That's the rule. Yeah. We're changing the rules. Okay. So... Um, all feelings are welcome. So the way I say it is, look, I'd rather be crying on a beach than crying in my bed, (laughs) you (laughs) You know? Yeah. And so if you got to take a day, if one of your days on your vacation is just being sad, then that's just what's going to have to happen. And you did not ruin vacation because of it. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's a great example. Yeah. Yeah. Those only two things I could think of that um, planning and welcoming in uh, the all all emotions are welcome. Is there anything else you think? Well, I would just also good? just add one other element to that. Yeah, is that in this transition period, nothing has to stick. So do oh, what you do now, and you can decide mm-hmm. what you're going to do next right. holiday season and the next time. Yeah, right? in fact, most of it won't. It's because uh, right. it's a polishing because it's but, process. Yeah, but I think that the idea of being present it gives your gives mm-hmm. your you know yourself, your journey, your nervous system permission to mm-hmm. just be what's in front of it, and that's just it's yeah. it's really a uh, you know I don't know it has such meaning to say I don't know. I don't have to come up with the rules for the next 25 years of my life right Right. now. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do today. That's why I don't play Monopoly, Mm -hmm. right? It's too long. Yeah. Right? So you don't have to make decisions about what do I do every Thanksgiving for now. Yeah. Right? And it might be choppy and unpolished and unkempt. You bet. Who cares? Right. right? You got to start somewhere. You do. Right. Absolutely. And you get permission to be messy. Yeah. Right. And mess it up and change your mind. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. In fact, I, I really do think the if we would give ourselves more permission to be messy, we would probably create a lot less bigger messes mm-hmm. for ourselves. Yeah, you know, in yeah. that sense. Yeah. But I, uh, you know, I think we covered it all. Oh, it's done. We fixed. It's done. We fixed. Everyone will be ready to change rules, yeah. and they'll see it as adaptive and healthy, and they won't have any <laughs> any any any, uh, with it. any book you uh, that just pops into your head that kind of. Mm. Because I, I was thinking about this earlier, and I was like, man, I don't know if if there has been anything really written uh, just about that. I'm I sure there's know. probably chapters I mean, and articles and research done. When you talk about rules and why things are and that the meaning is just a collective agreement, you have mm-hmm. all Harari's 
you know, yeah, a brief I, history, right? I was like, that Sapiens. that book is so going to come up in this episode because okay, yeah, you know it's how a, much it means to me and you. It's a yeah. brain buster of rules, right? Yes. Um, so maybe that. But I think that one for us is because it it just challenged us so so yes. much conceptually. It's not really a book about no, rules. Right. It's just. But that's what the profound impact was. Uh, Right. Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt yeah. in that. Yeah, I think that um, you know, I'm sure you know, I'm sure Gottman has some stuff sure. in there about. Right, I don't. But think probably that. Helen Fisher is the one that I'm That's thinking about another, the most. Yeah. See, but we're going large scale here. Here, and it's looking at historians and anthropology, <laughs> and you know, large <laughs> yeah. scale, right? Because I think yeah. it's. Just, I don't know. You know, I always I think a skill is zoom in, zoom out on things, yeah. right? So. Yeah, and and so I'll make sure to post some links, especially because I know Helen Fisher has written some stuff recently about the, uh, the how values shift and change uh-huh. in relationships, and I'll definitely hit on that. Okay. But let me just mention real quickly, like um, uh, there is one book that had a profound impact on me uh, with this idea, and um, and really kind of influential in my therapeutic approach and stuff like that. And it's called, uh, the sin of certainty. Oh yes. By Pete ends. And it, and it is a book on, um, on, uh, kind of the same concept, but from a spiritual angle. Um, but, um, that's not, it, it didn't have a spiritual impact on me. It really, Uh, made me think a lot about the work that we're doing and what people and couples are going through and how Mm -hmm. certainty and uncertainty work in that and how something like a death or infidelity or something like that can just completely disrupt Mm -hmm. uh, an entire governing system of rules. Yeah. So that, that'd be one, like, and I just, I just want people to be clear that I'm not, um, for me personally, it, it, was not a book that had an impact on my spirituality very much so, but it, it was really well done. I thought it was anyways. So. Okay. <clears throat> well, there's our, just a few suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oddly enough, like movies too, but we'll, we'll stay out of that. Yeah. Now. Josh, like, I, love, I just like it. stories. I know you do. I know. Well, yeah. I know. It's like the power of story. Sure. I know. But we better go. So, <laughs> okay. You know we keep talking about this forever. I know, I know. Because um, you know we missed something. In uh, there. I'm, I'm something. sure we got uh, yeah. not, yeah, a lot. There's like, there probably a fourth one in there. Uh huh. I'm fourth sure. Point. All right. Well, we appreciate uh, any support that people give, whether you're listening to this or watching this, sharing mm-hmm. it. Um, sharing and, feedback. Um, yeah, uh, feedback would be great. You know, making posts and comments on. Um, different types of topics like similar to this that you think you would like to get our take on. That's what's called therapist <laughs> take. And uh, maybe we will work that into another episode. Yeah. 